Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials bringing us from electromagnetism to optics. This video number 22, or video 3 in the subsection on the Fresnel equations. Specifically, I'm going to discuss Snell's law. The previous videos to this which are relevant are number 21, where I discussed reflection and transmission at normal incidence, or the coefficient for that at normal incidence. Video number 20, I discussed reflection and transmission at normal incidence in general. And that was quite a detailed video because it's in preparation for video number 23 where I'm going to discuss reflection and transmission at oblique incidence. So Snell's law is one of the fundamental equations in optics and it's been around for a long time. In, in fact, using it, or we'll say proving it I suppose, is probably one of the first experiments you might have done in the lab. So it's interesting to see where it comes from and it'll also be interesting to see how little classical electromagnetism is actually required in order to solve such a fundamental equation or to create such a fundamental equation. So we're talking about oblique incidence here. So let's say, for example, we have an interface. So let's say we have light incident on a piece of glass, a sheet of glass. And let's say the sheet of glass is in the X, Y plane. And I'm gonna draw the normal to the x, y plane, and that's going to be, of course, in the z axis like this. Later on, we'll see that we call the plane of incidence the x, z plane. So I'm going to get rid of y for the moment because it's just going to cloud the diagram. But we know that the, the interface is in the x, y plane, and the normal to the x, y plane is in the z direction. So we have a piece of light incident upon our sheet of glass. So we're going to have our incident wave vector. We're going to have a reflected wave vector. And we're going to get a transmitted wave vector. So I'm going to define the angles as follows. We have the incident angle, the reflected angle, and the transmitted angle. Note, of course, and this is very important, that the angles are with respect to the normal which in this case is the z-axis. Now, because we're talking about an interface, we might have two different media. We might have medium one and medium two. We might have, I don't know, we might have air and we might have some other, we might have some other gas. So that means that we might have different indices of refraction which would mean we have different speeds. And that's very important as well. And of course, for magnetism, we would have, the mu would be different as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is write down the actual equations for the electric field themselves. So let's say the incident electric field, so that's gonna be E sub i is equal to E zero sub i, E to the i, ki dot r minus omega t. Now just to look at this, we, we've shown when we solved the wave equation that we get exponential solutions or complex exponential solutions depending on how you, you define your separation constant. So you have our initial amplitude, we have our position vector, we have our, we have our, sep our uh, propagation vector, and we have our angular frequency multiplied by time. Now of course we can convert this very quickly into the magnetic field by just dividing by the speed. But for the moment, I'm just gonna write down the equations for the electric field, and we know, of course, what the equations for the magnetic field are gonna be. So that's the incident electric field. So let's talk about the, the reflected electric field. So that's gonna be E zero sub R, multiplied by E to the K dot, excuse me, E to the I, K R dot R minus omega T. and the transmitted one. So the next thing we need to do, I suppose, is look at the boundary conditions. Now I've discussed and uh, I've proven the boundary conditions in a previous video, but 
what we're going to do is loose not loosely we're going to apply them as was well using an argument rather than actually writing down the boundary conditions themselves so we know that the the fields the electric and magnetic fields in the medium in medium one are going to be e incident plus e reflected and b incident plus b reflected but that these must join to e transmitted and b reflected in medium two but we do we do that of course using the boundary conditions now let's just say for the moment we can write them as follows let's say we have i'm going to change my color the general form of all these will be something like this you'll have you'll have your amplitude you'll have an exponential let's say just at the incident exponential let's say i'm going to write it like this then we're going to have the amplitude we're going to have the reflected exponential and that's going to be equal to the amplitude plus the transmitted exponential and let's say it's plus or minus or whatever even i suppose that could be accounted for just in the in the uh, the amplitude itself so that's what they they look like in general i'm going to ignore the parentheses at the moment because you'll see you'll, you'll see why for the moment you'll see why now the important thing here is that the position dependence the x y and z dependence is all in the argument of the exponential or it's all in the exponentials themselves and because the boundary conditions must hold at all points in the plane and for all times these exponential factors must be equal because if you were to change they must be equal because say for example you moved somewhere on the z-axis then you'll be able to change the inequality but it's, suppo it's supposed to hold at all points so that means that the actual the arguments of the exponentials are all equal now there's no point well say the arguments are all equal but we can split them up by just saying the k dot r's are equal and the omega t's are equal so we're going to come up as a result with three equations and the equations the equations are as follows the k incident multiplied by or dotted excuse me with the position vectors k reflected dotted and k transmitted dotted but we're also going to get that omega 1 t1 and omega 2 t2 is equal to omega 3 t3 so here are our two equations these are very important equation a in this case gives us Snell's law the law of reflect the law of uh, and the law of reflection but equation B let's look at this well let's say we're not talking about rel a relativity that means the times are going to be equal and what we find is that the angular frequency is constant throughout so this is very important because the, and you, you need to remember this through any time any time your light goes through from one medium to another medium you say the angular frequency stays constant so the angular frequency is 2 pi times the linear frequency but the speed v is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength and the wave number is equal to 2 pi over the wavelength now why this is why this is important is as follows and you'll see in a moment i suppose but i'm just going to write it down we can rewrite this as saying the incident wave vector multiplied by the incident speed let's say v1 for medium one is equal to the reflected wave vector times v1 is equal to the transmitted wave vector times v2 okay but because the incident speeds are the same we have the incident wave vector and the reflected wave vector are the same let's call that equation c and we could rewrite if you wanted let's just write down one final equation let's say that k reflected actually i'll write it down here like this k incident and k reflected are going to be v2 over v1 k transmitted or in terms of the indices of refraction it's going to be n1 over n2 k transmitted So all of that fell out of the angular frequencies being constant the next thing we're going to do is look at equation a and this is where Snell's law comes from 
So let's say we take it at, we're going to discuss this at z is equal to zero. So we're talking about the origin. So to write it out explicitly, let's, let's to write out equation A explicitly. We're going to get x multiplied by k incidence of x plus y times k incidence of y is going to be x times k incidence of x or k, excuse me, k reflected sub x y k reflected sub y and so on. And we can rewrite this I suppose as three equations because like the x components are all going to be equal if we talk about z uh, we'll say let's let's talk about at, at um, let's talk about x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero so when you plug in those because so, we're talking about the origin we're going to get two further equations namely k incident in the y direction is k reflected in the y direction and k transmitted in the y direction and we get something similar for the x Now, what, what do we get out of this? Seems that we haven't really gotten much there, but I can tell you that those two equations are, they are, they are, those two equations are the fundamentals for geometrical optics. Because, let's say for example we put, let's say for example we put k transmitted in the z-axis. That means automatically k reflected is in the z-axis, and k incident is in the z-axis. They're all in the same axis. Or they might also all be in the same plane. Okay? So, we may as, like I said, we may as well orientate it such that the, the wave vector lies in a certain plane. And if it does that, all of them lie in the same plane. And what we get is the first law, that the incident, reflected, and transmitted wave vectors form a plane called the plane of incidence which includes the normal to the surface, in this case, the x-axis. So we're after getting the first law for geometrical optics. Now what about our x-components? What can we say about that? Well, if we're talking about an x-component, we're talking about taking the sine of some angle, let's say theta i or, or t. That's what we're doing. So what we can do now is rewrite this equation as k incident, sine theta incident. It's k reflected sine theta reflected is k transmitted sine theta is sine theta reflected or sine theta transmitted. But look up here at equation C. Equation C says the incident and reflected wave vectors are equal. That means that sine theta i is sine theta r. So we're after getting the law of reflection, that the incident and reflected in angles are the same. So we're after getting the law of reflection. So what else do we get out of this? Well, let's rewrite, let's rewrite it using these two. So k incident, this is going to be k incident. So we can rewrite this as follows. So sine theta t over sine theta i is going to be n1 over n2. And this is the third law of refraction, or excuse me, this is the third law, or the law of refraction, and we call this Snell's law. Okay, so like I said, pretty straightforward electromagnetism gives you a very fundamental law in geometrical optics. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. 
and you might also give me a comment on the box below.